Be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O hidden and exalted Lord Jesus Christ, you came down from heaven and dwelt in the womb of the Virgin Mary for our salvation. You visited John, your forerunner, while he was still in his mother's womb. In your mercy visit our souls and bodies, that we may praise you with purity and glorify you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father's exalted Son, whose majesty fills the heavens, and whose goodness is poured out upon the earth. In his mercy he chose to be confined in Mary's pure womb, and he filled his forerunner John with the Holy Spirit. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Glory to you, eternal Son, born of the Father before all ages. At the appointed time you became flesh of the Virgin Mary in a mysterious way and beyond our understanding. O King of kings and Savior of the world, you left the throne of your glory and became man. No mind can comprehend such humility and no tongue can describe it. Your mother took you to the hills of Judea while you were still in her womb, and there you met John, filling him with joy of your Holy Spirit. And then the hills were filled with joy and gladness. We implore you with the fragrance of this incense, and with the children and angels we cry out, glorify the Lord our God and praise him forever. Now with John we ask you to shower your mercy upon us, assist us with your strength, enlighten us by your teaching, and help us to know you. Make us worthy with our departed to stand at your right hand in your heavenly dwellings, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever.
God of peace, you reconcile the heights and all the depths. Now we ask you to accept the fragrance of our incense and establish peace among all the nations of the earth and among all the children of your church. Extend the right hand of your mercy upon us and upon our departed, that we may glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Kadishat, in the womb. Blessed are you, Holy Mary, and the fruit of your, your womb. Christ with holes, not his mercy, showing that his love is A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the holy ones who are in Ephesus, faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before him. In love, he destined us for the adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in the beloved. In him we have redemption by his blood, the forgiveness of transgressions, in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor that he set forth in him as a plan for the fullness of times to sum up all things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him we are also chosen, 
destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplished all things according to the intention of his will, so that we might exist for the praise of his glory. We who hope first in Christ, in him who also you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward the redemption of God's possession to the praise of his glory. Praise be to God always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Upon our holy lands, the praise, glory, and honor of the most holy Trinity, we burn this incense, Kyrie Eleison. For the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior, announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the word of the living God. The evangelist Luke writes, during those days, Mary set out, and she traveled to the hill country in all haste, to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, most blessed are you among all women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who have believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord should be fulfilled. This is the truth. This is the truth. Peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, for giving us his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, During those days, Mary set out and she traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We often don't think about the fact that this moment now, this present instant, is the result from all before even creation, from all eternity, God has in his providence desired this moment. And in fact, every moment in our lives. 
But of course, in this moment, as we come together around the mystery of the divine offering, so that he can reveal himself to us. When we look at the visitation, the question that we have to ask ourselves is, what do we see in our lives? And how do we see it? We forget that everything that's unfolding is unfolding in a way that is intelligent. It comes from the creator, the intelligent, and it unfolds also in charity and love. Every moment, every instant. So we don't often think about that fact or the fact that when the gospel is, the gospel, Christianity is not an ideology. It's not a way of simply thinking. It's a life. And it's a life which is offered to us, which has radiated out from the new creation on the dawn of the day of the resurrection. And that life that is offered to us is offered to us again from all eternity, historically from the moment of the resurrection. And that life which is proposed to each of us individually either flourishes, it brings forth fruit in this life, this individual life, or it dies and the chain is broken, so to speak. And so Christianity is a reality which is not only the fact that we see God's creation and God's unfolding of the universe, but we also know how to see it. When we think about the marvels, for example, in astronomy that we accomplish now, we send out these galactic probes that will go off and measure all kinds of details about creation. And it's absolutely magnificent. But it is only one aspect of what is unfolding in creation. It's a material aspect. And because as human beings, as intelligent beings, as creatures ourselves, we recognize there is an order in the universe, we refer to the laws of physics. Because they offer in a regularity and a regular manner. And because we can observe them, because we can measure them, because we can calculate and actually foretell certain things happening because of that regularity, we speak about the laws of physics or the laws of biology, or the laws of chemistry. Not because we're brilliant, but because the unfolding of creation is one of intelligence and of order. And even when the things that we don't see in our lives, this brick that we trip over, or the misunderstanding that takes place over a dinner, those things too are part of the unfolding of providence. Everything. Nothing escapes from that. And the reason why we bring this up for the visitation is because the question becomes, what do we actually see in the visitation? We see an elderly woman who very strangely seems to be pregnant, and the young woman coming to her house. That's all you actually see. But of course, we know what happens is much more profound than that. There is a beauty between this idea of what we see and how we see it that is manifested through our prayers. So on this feast of the visitation, the church portrays in the morning prayers and its hymns, the angels who veil themselves in awe before the divine word. The cherubim who hold up, as it's portrayed, hold up the majesty of the throne of the divine in fear, and yet who see the word incarnate with Mary living in intimacy in Nazareth. So this idea of seeing beyond, seeing how we see things around us, is portrayed in the beauty of these hymns. The angels that fear before the divine majesty stand at all and they clothe their faces with their wings. That's the way it's portrayed. That's why the seraphim in Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, they have six wings they're portrayed as. Seraph just means burning, that's all it means. Seraphim is plural. And what we call the cherubim is actually charub, charubim, the cherubim. The seraphim are the burning ones, and they're portrayed with six wings because they have two wings by which they sustain themselves in flight before this vision of Isaiah. 
two, by which they cover their existence, their body, and two, with which they veil their faces before the divine majesty, which is why they burn, because they are contemplators of the eternal and infinite charity, which is God. So when we speak about it, and we spoke last week about the veiling of the altar, why the veiling takes place. It's not to hide things, but the things that are the most sacred and the most beautiful, because it's from the altar that radiates out this proposal of life, which is the gospel. These things are veiled. The altar in the Syriac tradition is Christ, which is why it's incensed twice during the ceremonies, which is why it is also kissed when the preacher approaches into the Holy of Holies for the anaphora. The altar is Christ. For the fathers of the church, the altar is also the empty tomb of the morning of the resurrection of that life being revealed to us. It is also Calvary upon which our Lord died in his crucifixion. It is also the cross. And all of these realities are what the altar is, which is why it's treated with the utmost respect. And it's the reason why when we veil these things and why we mentioned last week the veiling of the altar, it is a question of awe. When we come to see, and when we see in the manner which is appropriate for the things of God, then we stand in awe. Awe is the emotional reaction that we have to feeling really small before something which is majestic or wondrous, sometimes painful. But awe is that sense. The, the word awe has been kind of destroyed these days, of course, because every teenager, for everything is awesome, awesome. And the problem is we forget what awe is actually about. Awe is this idea of being overwhelmed by the majesty of the Alps. But awe in itself has a perfect response, but awe is also part. Why do the angels veil themselves in watching Mary and the Christ child in Nazareth? It's not because of the child and Mary. It's because they see what the reality of that intimacy is, that this is the eternal God who is present to this woman in her house. That the eternal creator of infinite love is the one for whom she's changing his diapers. It's a little overwhelming when we kind of think of it in details of what we see. And so the altar is the point that radiates out this divine life which is given to us in the gospel. It should inspire in us awe, which is why though we may say we go to church on Sunday, that's really just kind of the way the Protestants talk. Catholics have always said we go to mass. We go to the divine offering because it's in that divine mystery that God is revealing to himself, revealing himself to us personally, each one of us individually. There may only be one ceremony going on, but for each one who partakes in this divine sacrifice, there is an intimate, unique revelation going on on this morning, December 1st, 2019. It's why we come back again in the following week. Every day, every week of that day of the resurrection, we return because God's desire from all eternity, before the creation of the world, before those stars that we are measuring with astronomic probes, even existed. God's desire is to reveal himself this day. And for those who are able every day that the Eucharist is there, that he can reveal himself, not by the awe of the beauty of the stars. That's one thing. The philosophers can discern that. But only Christians can hear the personal voice of God revealed in the mysteries. And that is why we come, and that's why the sense of awe, when we enter into this divine place, you know, the house of God, the Beth El is what we refer to this building as being because it's here in the juncture between heaven and earth. That is what the altar is. And everything is built around the altar. The divine mysteries exist. The altar is created for this place where our Lord can reveal himself personally. And that's why we have this beauty of during the season of the announcements when we contemplate the profound depth of what God is trying to accomplish in our lives personally. 
So that when we look at the visitation, and notice that we don't just call it the visit of Mary to Elizabeth. Sometimes it may escape us. But the word visitation, which is kind of an older word, visitation actually means the act of going to survey, to see something. The word visit itself is related to the word videre, to see, in Latin. The visiting to see someone, we use that in English also. We go to see our grandmother. We go to visit our grandmother. Well, most of us don't think, but originally, both of these words were very much simulated, to see. So when the Blessed Virgin Mary goes to Ayin Karim, which is the little village, it's not named in the gospel, but by tradition it's the place. It's about five miles west of Jerusalem. But now by Jerusalem's expansion, it's now part of the metropolitan area of the city of Jerusalem. But when she enters there, it's a separate town, it's a separate village. And as I said, what we see is just an elderly lady and a young woman, a teenager. We don't see anything else. And I gave you in the Aramaic uh, of the Peshitta that we have in the bulletin today, that yes, the greeting to Elizabeth, but in the Aramaic is that she seeks the peace of Elizabeth. Shlom Lech, peace be to you. And this correspondence between the two, what takes place is much more profound. That's why the question, what do we see and how do we see it? What they see, well, as I say, would be just two women standing in the doorway or the front room of a little house. But what takes place at this moment is an entire transformation of these two, specifically, excuse me, specifically of Elizabeth. And what we wind up having take place here is a woman who is filled with the Holy Spirit and who begins to prophesy. She begins in the spirit of prophecy when she says to Our Lady, what is it that the mother of my Lord should come to me? How does this happen? And of course, this transformation of the Holy Spirit is something which is not seen to the eyes of the world. And that the child who doesn't see anything outside of his mother's womb. This child is only at the end of his second trimester. This child begins to leap around in his mother's womb. All you mums remember those moments, but I remember this one being so noticeable. This isn't just the baby kicking of, oh, oh, the baby here, feel the baby, honey. No, this is the baby is leaping around in response to the entrance of this teenager into the house. And she says, from the moment that your voice was heard, my child, this child leaps within my womb. Because this is the moment when the Old Testament, John is the last of the prophets of the old law, recognizing the one who was promised for centuries, the Messiah is present here. But the Messiah who is present is a little clump we know nowadays, is a little clump of cells. This is the very beginning, the first week, the first two weeks, certainly within the first month of his conception, that the Messiah is present in the womb of Mary of Nazareth. Life begins at the moment of conception. And this moment, the Messiah who is present, the word incarnate, is recognized in the womb of the other woman, so that the Old Testament recognizes the meaning of the new and eternal testament, the new and eternal covenant. And in that response, the last of all of the prophets waiting for this redemption of God leaps in his mother's womb, even before birth. This is the moment we have all, Israel has been waiting for. And John, at the end of the second trimester of, of his gestation, already recognizes this as the forerunner. And then we have this beautiful reaction. You don't have it in the gospel today, but I recommend to go back and read the Magnificat, this canticle of gratitude of Mary of Nazareth, that my soul, my life rejoices in God, proclaims and extols God, and my spirit, the very mind, the spirit that God has given me, rejoices in God, my savior. 
Do you remember the word savior doesn't mean he gets us out of the bowels of hell. The word savior, salus, savior, means the one who brings healing and brings us wholeness, restores us to what God originally intended. That's salvation. Mary recognizes her response is gratitude. When we are grateful, and that's why this is so important of how we see, that when we see that God from all eternity created this moment for our benefit to participate in the divine intelligence and in the divine love, then the world is a different place. And that includes not just in the divine mystery, because here he reveals himself personally to us, but throughout his act of providence, he's always revealing himself to us, taking out the trash, cutting the grass, washing the car. These things are also manners by which he reveals himself, not personally like he does in the manner that he reveals in the divine mysteries. But if we have eyes to see and the children of God should have the eyes to see and the ears to hear, then the world changes. And then we see with gratitude. I have a flat, I come out of the grocery store and there's a flat on my car. I can stand there and scream. I can get angry at my husband because he didn't rotate correctly the wheels and he didn't replace the tires last year like I told him. Or I can understand that God's providence is guiding everything and this moment has a meaning for me. Which is why those who are grateful go through life in great harmony and in great peace. They are the healers of the world on a human level because they're grateful for everything. But they can't be grateful unless they see that it has a higher perspective and a higher light that shines. Which is why when Elizabeth says these things to Mary of Nazareth, her response is one of gratitude. Everything you say is true. It's true. I am the mother of the Lord. It is true that the mother of the Lord has come to your house. It is true that your baby is going wild because the Old Testament finally sees the light at the end of the tunnel of redemption and salvation. But her response is not, yeah, it's right, it's true, it's good. Her response is, I myself also recognize that. I myself magnify the Lord. I myself, with my mind, my spirit, rejoices and extols my Savior. This is a whole difference. And so as we develop and enter in deeper into the mysteries, we ask our Lord that he give us this understanding that all the providence comes together, that each moment in our lives, and especially within the divine mysteries, he desires to reveal himself to us personally. When we've done that, and the day that we teeter into the grave, our life will have been filled with treasures. Because it means that every moment for us has life and intelligence and light and love present in it. And it's not just a fairy tale aspect, but we have to have the ability to be able to see that reality. And when we see that reality, not only when we teeter into the grave while our lives have been filled with treasures, however simple they may have been, but we will also teeter into the grave grateful for a life which had been well spent and enriched by that divine love and that eternal intelligence. And so when we come in, we always are meant to be in awe before this place, this altar, where God reveals himself personally, which is why when we enter the church, we bow profoundly before the altar, before our divine Lord's presence. Then we pray. We dispose ourselves so that we're ready to listen, Lord, to hear this revelation that you have created from all eternity for this moment. And when we've done that by the end of the liturgy and during the liturgy, we proclaim our own magnificat, that my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit receiving this personal revelation and receiving the light of awe and the proper disposition to see, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, the one who makes me whole. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from the light, true God from true God, begotten God. Confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the world to come. Amen. Itelot madeb heda loho, walvot ar loho da kare kanyo, wainer silo taibo ta hokeyo da the Bible. What? My talk lit. Mighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you. Out of their love for you and for your holy name, shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Elizabeth. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today 
in this offering. to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, you are true love, security that is ever sure and hope that never fails. Grant love, happiness, and everlasting peace to your children here before you. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with pure hearts and souls and with a holy kiss worthy of your blessed name that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to your holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to the Lord. before your majesty send us your grace and glorious blessings from the heights of your heavenly sanctuary that we may glorify you your only son and your holy spirit now and forever Amen. O lord you sent your beloved son at the appointed time for our salvation and he gave us these holy and life-giving mysteries do not look upon us as strangers and do not turn your holy face away from us because of our many sins. For you alone are the Holy One with your only Son and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. It is right and just to praise you, O Lord of all in heaven and on earth. The powers on high in the heavenly 
and the heavens where they dwell glorify you. The fiery ranks exalt you, the cherubim bless you, and the seraphim worship you. They cry out and they proclaim. Son and your Holy Spirit, one and indivisible in nature, and you sanctify all things by your divine power. For our salvation, you sent your Son into the world. He descended, became flesh, suffered, and was crucified for us, who had distorted his image. Pretty son. Rabbiamo hadakum hasho dilema bed hayim, and sabe lachmo beda koni shoto, o barahu kadesh, waksuya beratal mi tau kadomara, sabahulam mene kulho, ho no denitao. Alcoso damsi homen hamro men mayo Barahu Kadesh Yabil Talmi Tao Kadomara Savish Tao Mene Kulho O no Deni Tao Demondil Diantiki Hodato Dachlo faikun wachlof sagie, et ein shadu meti heb. Chusoyon haume wa haye, dal alam alamin. Do this in memory of me. For whenever you eat this body and drink this blood, you proclaim my death until I come again. Christ our God, we remember your plan of salvation, and we implore your goodness. When you come in glory with your holy angels, and all await the reward they deserve, and when you place the sheep to the right and the goats to the left, do not look upon us as strangers to your household, and do not turn your holy face away from us. Do not let our sins and offenses pierce your holy heart, and do not separate us from you. For we have professed your holy name and have proclaimed your divinity. Rather, treat us according to your promises. Forgive our sins, pardon us, and have mercy upon your inheritance. For this your repentant church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, 
Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Manin Murio, Manin Murio, Manin Murio, Nite Mordorojo, Hail Kadisho, Onahen Alai Nualo Cordabono, Hono. Descent, he may make this bread the body of Christ our God. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of Christ our God. Amen. May these holy mysteries sanctify the souls and bodies of those who share in them, and cleanse their hearts, purify their thoughts, and be a pledge of the heavenly kingdom and new life forever. Amen. O Lord, we now remember in this sacrifice all the holy churches and the shepherds of the true faith, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Peshada Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops. With them we remember the priests, the deacons, and all who serve your church. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace and stability of the whole world, for a blessed and prosperous year, for an abundant harvest, for the sick and the oppressed, for all who call upon your holy name on land, at sea, or in the air, and who profess that you are the true God, we pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, those who have presented the offerings upon this altar and those who desired to do so but were unable, and grant them their petitions. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your holy church that you established on the solid rock of the true faith, and send her vocations to the holy priesthood and religious life. In a world of distractions which pull us away from properly <coughs> loving you and our neighbor, may those whom you have called to serve your holy church respond to you and have the courage to follow your will. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember all the saints, the fathers, prophets, apostles, martyrs, and confessors, Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. Marin, St. Elizabeth, and all the righteous and the just. Through their prayers make us worthy to stand among them. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, in your grace, those who have left us and have gone to you from the first Christian disciples to this day. They were signed with the seal of baptism and received the precious body and blood of your Son. They wane for you in your life-giving hope. Raise them up on the last day and in your mercy forgive all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant rest, O God, to the departed, us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. For your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O oh God the Father, you accept prayers and you answer petitions. You taught us through your beloved Son to stand before you and to call upon you with pure souls and with clear consciences, praying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom of God, the glory are yours, now and forever. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation and from harm of evil, for you have power over all. And we raise glory to you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit, bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord, in your grace and abundant mercy, bless those who bow before you. Make us worthy to share in your life-giving mysteries and to join the assembly of your saints, that with them we may raise glory to you to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit, let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility, and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One, one Holy, holy Father, Father, one Holy Son, one, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth, to him be glory forever. Make us worthy of the Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
Gracious God and Father, how can we repay you for your goodness and for the salvation you have just given us? Who can give you the glory you truly deserve? In our weakness, and insofar as we are able, we worship, praise, and thank you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Jesus Christ, our God, we worship, thank, and praise you. We implore your goodness and abundant mercy for the salvation of the whole world for the protection of the living and eternal rest to the departed, for the feeding of the hungry and the support of the needy, for the visiting of the sick and the consolation of the grieving. Through your grace dwell in them, and by your abundant mercy give them life. By your cross bless your people and protect your inheritance. Adoration is due to you, to your Father, and to your holy and life-giving Spirit, now and forever. <clears throat> and so it is beautiful to see you on this gorgeous morning, a bit cold, but it's lovely to see everyone here in this lovely sun. We have two announcements. One, we have a drum roll because the drawing for the great raffle is on Tuesday. Now we've covered the prize money, so don't worry, the check's coming for someone who's going to be very delighted with $10,000 for Christmas. But it also means that we haven't sold all the tickets. So I'm just announcing to you that because we've sold just over a hundred of them, it means that your chances are even more incredible, or as they say, awesome, as than they were before, when it was one in 400, which was still pretty good. So what we're telling you this morning is you have the, op you have the opportunity, one last chance, to buy those tickets to get in for that one and a hundred and five or whatever it may be raffle for the ten thousand dollars. Now, when I wrote in the bottom of the bulletin, what would Jiddu think, right? Most of you have Lebanese blood. What was Jiddu? What were the immigrants remembered for? Well, besides being very loving and kind, the club. Cigarettes, smoking nonstop and gambling, right? The card games. We want to see your Lebanese blood stirred up on this morning. I'm assuming, Lenore, you have the tickets? Uh, Ruth has and I have some. Fine, so Ruth's back again. She was selling last night. So that's the first announcement. Allow the waves of Lebanese blood to, bur to burble up and to buy tickets this morning. The second is the Knights of Columbus are also here selling their, as a fundraiser, selling their Tootsie Rolls. And who doesn't like Tootsie Rolls? And of course, the Nativity Fast doesn't begin until the 15th. So empty their boxes this morning buying Tootsie Rolls after you bought your raffle tickets. <laughs> so go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever.